Hi guys, Dave Andrade here. So Adobe did put out the Lumetri color engine into Premiere Pro now, which is great because a lot of the features that we have in SpeedGrade now we can do a lot of the stuff over here in Premiere without having to do the direct link. Um, I will start off by saying there are some benefits to still using SpeedGrade and I, I can address those in another video. However, unless you need those specific features, then this will take care of most of the color grading, color correction, stuff like that, that you need to do all within Premiere. Now, what I'm going to do in this video, it will be a quick video, is not necessarily walk you through all of this. This is pretty straightforward. If anybody wants specific clarification on what some of this stuff means, just let me know in a comment and I'll walk you through it. In fact, what I'll do is just quickly go through it now. The exposure that will basically just adjust the brightness, light to dark, the contrast, self-explanatory, highlights and shadows, that's a great option to have here because what you can do is if something is underexposed, you can bring those up and you can bring the detail back. Of course, it all depends on the codec. Sometimes information is just lost, which is why cameras with the high dynamic range are great to have. Now, there are a few things that I wanted to show you specifically. What we'll do is come into the temperature here, and as you can see, it's not very specific. You have the 100 markers here, but it doesn't specify where you're going. If you're using this Lumetri color effect, and you can find that just by typing it in over on the effects panel, you blindly just have to move back and forth, or try it once and then remember it. So what you have to do in this case, at least for the current revision that's out right now, is go to Window, Lumetri Color, and now if we come up to Basic Correction, there you go. Now you have the temperature, you move to the left, you're going to, you're cooling it down, right, you're going to move it towards a more warm output, and then of course you have the tint where you can either slide it towards the green, or slide it over to the magenta. You have some options in here, including sharpen, vibrance, and vibrance is essentially the same as saturation for all intents and purposes, except that it doesn't really affect the skin tone as much. Um, and that's kind of a simple way of putting it, but with saturation, it's just an overall saturation. Vibrance is a little more refined. Coming down to curves, we have the general curves that everybody's probably very familiar with the red, blue, and green. And you can move these from their respective corners here. You have the hue saturation curve where you can choose a specific color and you can make it more saturated or less saturated, refining that one specific color. Color wheels, if you've done any color grading before and you can always reference my other videos, that's very specific. You probably are familiar with this. Vignette, personally, for me, I don't know that I'd ever use this, but it's a nice thing to have. The last thing I wanted to show you guys is the Lumetri Scopes. So I'm going to come over to Window, come down to Lumetri Scopes. And this is more what we have over in SpeedGrade. Now what I would do is come over here. Make sure the color space is set to Rec. 709 for high definition. As you can see, you can specifically set your parade type and your waveform type. You can have it show the RGB. And you can have it just show the Luma, which is what I personally would use it for, at least within uh, Premiere Pro. One other thing I will state is if we come over here and let's go ahead and go into this. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's what I think you should have it set up with. When you first open this in Premiere Pro, what it will have, let me come back here, is this. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with this particular scope, but it may be a little hard to decipher. And this is pretty much along the lines of what is, well, what was in Premiere Pro before. Uh, you have essentially a color wheel here with the red, yellow, green. As you can see, it's easier to discern what you're doing. The closer it is to the center, the less saturated it is, 
then obviously towards the outside that's more saturated and this is what I personally use as a reference anything outside this line right here is starting to become a little overly saturated so we can come in here I'm gonna get rid of this one and I'm going into histogram so you can actually have all four scopes put up and I like these a lot better than the ones that they had in Premiere Pro before now again, I just wanted to make this quick video. A lot of the stuff within the effect is pretty self-explanatory. You can obviously read up on it. I'm not necessarily gonna walk it through each step and tell you what temperature means, stuff, stuff like that. You can always, if you are curious or confused, you can always reference some of my other videos. Uh, even regarding this, regarding clamping the signal, that's in one of my other videos. If you can't locate it, that's fine. Go ahead and leave me a comment below. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. This is a great update to Premiere Pro. Again, I'd rather have these scopes than the ones that they had. It's a lot more specific and easier to judge what you're doing. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. And I do have two other videos lined up. So I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks. Bye.